Chemical change. A chemical change is any change that produces at least one new substance. Another word for change in this context here is the word reaction. So we could also say that a chemical reaction is any reaction that produces at least one new substance. Here's one example of a chemical change or chemical reaction. A beautiful yellow solid is produced when two liquids are mixed together. I'll return to this reaction a little later. I'll pause here briefly to say that this video contains many examples, as I believe that it is through examples that concepts are best understood. Here, someone is dropping a cube of sodium metal into water. The reaction is quite violent. One of the products formed is hydrogen gas, which often catches fire in these demonstrations. So this is a dramatic example of a chemical change. Here is sodium bicarbonate, also called baking soda, being added to water. You can see the bicarbonate disappearing, but we can't see a new substance formed, and therefore no chemical reaction has taken place. This was not a chemical reaction, but rather the physical change of dissolving. Here's one more example. The same sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, will react with vinegar, as you know. This clip shows the side and top view of the reaction. This is a chemical change because a new substance, carbon dioxide gas, has been produced. Chemical reactions are quite variable in how fast they occur. Let's look at a few examples. The first two reactions we saw are fast, precipitation of the lead iodide and the vinegar baking soda reaction. By the way, the yellow substance may have looked like a liquid the way it was forming in the earlier video, but it wasn't a liquid. The yellow is made up of very tiny particles of solid. The, the flowing image that you saw just gave the appearance of liquid. Ignition and combustion of a match is also fast, as is combustion generally, like burning paper or forest fires. Here is a picture of exploding dynamite, or perhaps TNT, clearly chemical changes. And the exploding fireworks that introduced this video is also a well-known example of chemical change. Under moderately slow, I'll put a quietly burning candle. Although on the molecular level, the molecules of wax are moving around quite fast as they are reacting with oxygen from the air, but just by observation, this looks like a moderately slow reaction. Here is hydrogen peroxide, often used to uh, decolorize hair or act as a disinfectant on wounds. But as soon as it is manufactured, it begins decomposing slowly into water and oxygen gas. The setting of concrete shown here is also a fairly slow process, taking a day or two to dry, but a month or more to cure. Curing, by the way, involves the process of hydration, which is a chemical reaction. These are curds from milk. Forming curds, a chemical change, can take several minutes by adding vinegar or heating. Under slow, we have rusting, which is too slow to observe taking place we see the results over longer periods of time. The fermentation process that produces alcohol is also slow, taking two to three weeks. Flowers can seem to fade once the pollination period is over. Old newspaper and books will yellow over a long period of time. And the formation of oil and gas from plants and marine life occurs over many thousands of years. Next. How can we decide whether a reaction is a physical change or a chemical change? There are some clues to be aware of that can help us decide. The most common ones are these four coming up. If a solid material forms when liquids are mixed, this generally indicates that a chemical change has occurred. Such a solid is called in chemistry a precipitate. This clip shows the formation of a beautiful yellow precipitate you saw earlier called lead iodide. In this clip, a blue solution of copper sulfate will be mixed with colorless solution of sodium hydroxide. The result is a jelly-like solid known as a gelatinous precipitate. It's a very soft solid. 
The next clue is whether a gas is produced. Here is boiling water in which bubbles of the water vapor are produced. Water vapor is a gas. Does this mean boiling water is a chemical change? You know that it isn't for two reasons. First, no new substance is being formed. And secondly, boiling is a, a change in state, which you know is the physical change. In this next example, four different metals are sitting in hydrochloric acid. This will appeal to people who have lab experience, especially in a high school setting. Bubbles are clearly forming in the zinc example, Zn. And if you look carefully in the second tube containing iron, Fe, bubbles are also forming, but at a much slower rate. The bubbles are hydrogen gas, and so indicate that a chemical change is taking place. Nothing is happening in the other tubes. Pb is lead, and Cu is uh, copper. And so we can say that no chemical reaction is taking place. In the next example, a man is quickly showing two liquids which should never be mixed. They are bleach and ammonia. Each one is a cleaning agent, and when mixed, they will produce a gas. So this qualifies as a chemical change. But here's a warning. The gas, called chloramine, is poisonous and irri irritates the upper airways uh, of our lungs. But in greater concentrations, it can be corrosive and, and cause hospitalization and even death. So using each one separately is fine, but they should never be used together. I say this in the spirit of a public service announcement. Clue number three concerns whether heat and light are produced. In the case of a burning match, it is clear that heat and light are produced along with new substances like carbon dioxide, water, and ash, and therefore it is evident that a chemical change is occurring. Now, let's consider a uh, burning light bulb. Of course, it's not burning in the same sense as a match, but that's how often we, we often talk about light bulbs. Heat and light are being produced. Does this mean a chemical change is taking place? We need to consider whether any new substance is being produced. When the light bulb is turned off, the heat and light are gone, and we are left with the same tungsten filament that be we began with. Since no new substance has been formed, we have to say that a burning light bulb is not an example of a chemical change. Here is an insect producing light in its body. Although no appreciable heat is given off, there is light. So is a chemical change taking place? The way this light is produced in fireflies and in certain insects and various types of fish is through a chemical reaction in their bodies. So yes, this light indicates a chemical change. Since heat is not a factor here, we should now really say the clue for a chemical change is if heat and or light is produced. Since it takes place in a biological organism, we call this bioluminescence. Here is a case in which much heat and light are produced chemical change? You may recognize what is happening here. A molten metal is being poured into a mold where it will cool down and solidify into the solid form. So this is a change in state in which no new substances form and again is a physical change not a chemical change. Do you recognize these glow sticks? There is light produced, that is there is luminescence, but no appreciable heat just like in the insect example. So this is a chemical change and is called chemiluminescence because two chemicals reacted together to produce the light. A fourth clue is whether a color change has occurred. In the formation of this precipitate, as you have already seen, a chemical change is taking place. So therefore, color is a clue that a chemical change occurred. Is this white precipitate a color change? Well, we started with a colorless solution, so the appearance of white is a change in color. And this is a chemical reaction. Now, look at this cup, which I picked up in Arizona many years ago. As hot water goes into the cup, you can see how the color is changing. Actually, only one color, that of the cup, is changing from black 
to white. This color on the cup has the property of changing when the temperature changes enough. But this is not accompanied by any new products, so we would normally say this is not a chemical change. But now I must introduce a new idea. If molecules undergo a change in their structure, this is considered a chemical change. Although we can't see the changes in the molecules, we can see their effects. The pigments in the cup change from black to white at high temperatures and then back to black at room temperature. So this example actually shows a chemical change. This temperature strip on the forehead acts in a similar way. In this example, blue and red food coloring was added to water. After mixing, the result is a purple color. Chemical change? No, no new substance was formed. So even though there was a color change that might indicate a chemical change, it is just a clue, not a guarantee. Remember, the important question to answer is, has a new substance been produced? One more. The green color that forms on copper roofs, called patina, indicates a chemical change occurring over a long time. The reaction is between the copper of the roof and the moisture and carbon dioxide in the air. So again, this is why we use the word clue, because clues are indicators rather than guarantees of chemical changes. Here's a quick uh, summary of these four clues. First, a solid material forms when liquids are mixed. Second, if a gas is produced. Third, if heat and or light are produced. And fourth, if a color change has occurred. Finally, the concept of reversibility is a key to understanding chemical changes. Chemical changes that take place under what we call normal or room conditions are almost always irreversible. Here is an example shown earlier of a solid called a precipitate that has been formed, and once formed, the products will never get back to the original substances. This picture shows how a reaction in a flask has produced a gas that has partially blown up balloons. The gas cannot be recombined with the material in the flask to produce the original substances, at least not under these room conditions. This makes the original reaction irreversible. Another familiar example is frying an egg. Once the soft or raw egg is heated for some time, it becomes this more solid form and can never be changed back to the original raw form. Heat causes the protein structure in the egg to change its shape and structure, and this results in the more solid form. The same thing happens when a raw steak is heated, and depending on how long it's heated, you can get six different forms as shown here. Many reactions that take place in a closed container, in which the temperature and pressure are allowed to rise significantly, can be reversible. But that is a topic that is dealt with in grade 12 chemistry and beyond. However, there are two exceptions that you are probably familiar with. These glasses can change color from between dark and uh, light based on how much sunlight they get. Now, as you know, sunlight contains UV light, that's ultraviolet light, that causes certain molecules within the glass to change their structure so that the glass is turned dark. If molecules change their structure, that is considered a chemical change, as was stated earlier, and this is what happens. So the previous example of the uh, cup that got hot water in it is also an example of a reversible chemical change. UV beads also represent a reversible chemical change. The UV light, again, causes changes in the structure of those molecules that react to light. Right now they are white when out of any light. But when exposed to light, which contains UV light, they turn colors. Remove the light and they go back to white. 
Apparently these beads can undergo changes around 50,000 times before the pigment stops responding. The idea that a chemical change must produce at least one new substance makes these two examples a bit tricky because we can't see the change in molecular structure. The concept of reversibility for chemical changes is pretty good for most reactions that we encounter in our environment, in the kitchen, baking, and in chemistry classes. But keep in mind that this is not fixed in stone as we've seen here. In fact, in many industrial uh, processes and research labs, many chemical reactions take place that are reversible. But to repeat, in our everyday lives, most chemical changes we will encounter are irreversible. This ends the video on chemical change.